Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to UCAS. I'm excited to be with you. It's been a weird week this week, uh, getting ready for Sunday, which we are very excited about, uh, putting the last touches, hopefully getting all the cables and stuff to work. Um, so yeah, hopefully this is a good thing um, and, and it'll be ready for Sunday. But we are reading Mark 14. Um, it is a longer section, so we decided to kind of split it up a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to read the sections that we are going to talk about. Um, just so that way we're not having a 45 minute UCAST today. So uh, to try and keep it down a little bit, uh, hopefully to entertain you and give you some words of wisdom about God. Um, and then, yeah, send you on your way. But I encourage you to read it on your own. Um, but yeah, Gretchen, you want to go ahead and start? You got the first section. Yeah, I'm going to read uh, about Jesus anoint being anointed at Bethany. Um, and while he was Bethany, while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at a table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment, a pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Uh, the first part that strikes me in this is, she had to be pretty brave to walk into somebody else's house. Um, and, you know, especially as a woman, there's probably majority of the people in there were men. Mm -hmm. um, and so I mean, she didn't let that stop her. Um, and then to show great faith and honor to Jesus uh, that way, um, by just doing what she felt was the right thing to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I wonder how, how much honor do we show Jesus uh, on a daily basis, um, despite uh, diversity, you know, um, you know, well, we might uh, maybe not do it because somebody might have bad feelings about that or might say something negative. So we just kind of keep it to ourselves. And, Mm -hmm. um, but she didn't care. Um, she was ridiculed and she probably knew she was going to be going into it. Um, and she gave all of it. It's very expensive, very costly. She didn't hold anything back, broke the bottle. Yeah. Um, so, you know, are, are we holding things back? Do we give all? Mm -hmm. um, I'd say we're, you know, I know it's hard to just here you go. <laughs> yeah. We're like, well, we need this percentage for this, and we need that percentage for that. But, mm -hmm. I don't know. And then just, you know, did she ever know what role she played? You know, even though he said, you know, she's anointed my body for burial. Yeah. Or put those two things together, and yeah, she's like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and then later afterwards, you know, like, you know, did she? I mean, that was a, I mean, we give her honor for what she did. Did she ever feel that? Mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. But, yeah. So just things that struck me reading that mm -hmm. passage. Yeah. Like it, I mean, yeah, you brought up a ton of great points with, you know, the, how expensive it was, you know, like it's kind of, that's how they saved up, right? You don't put money in the bank, you know, in quite the same way. Right. But, you know, that could have been something she's saving up and, you know, we don't know what her lifestyle was like. Uh, you know, we have some glimpses in it and such, but uh, yeah, it could have been a down payment of a house, right? Or something like that. <laughs> she's deciding that, hey, this is more important and I'm just going to- dowry, could have been her dowry, you know, <laughs> could have been all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. Throwing it all just, yeah, at his feet and, and, you know, the other part about honoring him you know, no matter the consequences, you know, how hard is it at times when we know what we should, what we should do, but we right. don't, because we don't, you know, like, oh, that person's going to be mad at me. They won't like it. 
uh, you know, just, you know, even small things, let alone something as big as walking into a room and doing this act of, of kindness. And yeah. So, yeah. 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 I find it interesting that, you know, it says, for you always have the poor with you and whenever you want, you can do good for them. It was like they were scolding her for all that money or all that that she gave. Mm -hmm. And it's like Jesus is saying, okay, you're worried about what she brought in, but you can do for the poor whenever you want. Yeah. You know, so it's almost one of those things again, where he's, he's, you know, looking into the heart and saying, okay, what are you really after here? It's, it's the greed. Um, because it's like, if you're so worried about the poor, you can do that anytime. Mm -hmm. Why, why are you making such a big deal of it now? Yeah. Which was interesting to me. Yeah. It's like Jesus saw right through mm -hmm. what they were saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Camille, you want to, what was your, or no, I'm next. Sorry, forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, next. Um, I'm uh, talking about the Lord's Supper there, uh, verse 22, uh, that little paragraph um, just says, as they were eating, he took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to them and said, take, take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup after giving thanks and he gave it to them and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drew, when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Um, after singing him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Um, but just the Lord's Supper, you know, we, we get to celebrate that. We get to do this part. Um, you know, and, and they were probably confused, you know, take and eat, this is my body, you know, and kind of confused about that. Um, but just, you know, it's a new covenant that they have with him. And I just, growing up, we we had communion every week. Uh, you know, I, I got baptized when I was in middle school. And so all through high school, um, you know, and, and I, yeah, it's just kind of part of that, you know, that memories um, that I have of, of the Lord's Supper is just spending those those some Sundays, um, you know, with, with fellow believers doing that. And, you know, I enjoy when we do it here. I miss it. Uh, that's one of the things I'm excited to get back to at some point, um, you know, when we're able to. We did it on Good Friday, but uh, we should probably talk about doing that again. Uh, you know, yeah, because we talk about that with all you now. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Um, but just, you know, that taking a moment and going, you know, this is what Jesus did. This is what he commanded us to do to, you know, represent himself, uh, you know, his sacrifice for us. And, you know, we can, we can join in that covenant, um, you know, it, it, you know I, and I just think that's awesome. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I got for that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and to me, it had to be so confusing for the disciples at that time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, take my body and eat it. This is my blood. You know, and it, it for us, it all makes sense because we're looking back. But for mm -hmm. them, I, I just wonder, you know, what would it have been like to be one of them, to be there and to watch Jesus do this and, you know, not fully comprehending or understanding yeah. what he's talking about, but yet trusting him. Mm -hmm. You know, they had seen for three years everything he'd done. And so, but I still think it would have been a little awkward of, you know, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Especially right, you know, the, the thing we just heard that, you know, he's just said that he was being anointed for burial, mm -hmm. you know, and then he's talking right. about eating his body. So it's a weird one two combination there. Yeah. Yeah, because they're still thinking too that he was going to be a king somehow yeah. yeah a lot of them still had that thought that he was going to actually rule on earth mm -hmm. that's a king so yeah yeah Ooh, all right well um camille you want to start now it's your turn yeah. so i'm going to skip ahead to verse 32 um about jesus praying in, in gethsemane with peter james and john yeah. and it says and they went to a place called gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with them Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. 
and going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is just an interesting, that whole scene of Peter, James, and John. And it says that he was greatly distressed and troubled. Mm -hmm. But I'm also thinking for them to fall asleep when he says, you know, can you watch? Knowing that your friend is that troubled. But I also... I understand the exhaustion of what their prior three years had looked like, um, traveling with Jesus everywhere, and um, maybe even just the last week from the time they entered Jerusalem. Um, but it's just that whole, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And how many times when I sit down to pray, and you know, your, your spirit, you just want to, but it's like, I can't keep my eyes open, or I can't even think, I can't focus to do it, or whatever. Um, but yet Jesus, at this hour, even up to the very last minute before he was to give his life up, he was still asking God, you know, can this be, can it be taken from me? Willing to surrender to God's will, but also willing to ask right up to the last moment. Mm -hmm. So it's that, that humble submission but yet still asking you know god if, it, if it's possible and you know it's sometimes we're like you just need to surrender to god's will but yet i think this is an example of even up to the last second it's okay to keep asking mm -hmm. yeah I, that reminds me of uh, when i worked with some uh kids you know i was a living care provider person and we taught them skills and one of the skills was disagreeing appropriately you know and so when somebody you know especially an authority figure tells you something you don't like you you know you can pout and whine or you can you know take a moment collect yourself and you know make a case for yourself and I, this kind of to me is Jesus making a case saying like hey I understand the big picture but right now, this isn't that much fun for me, you know, not, to, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, not the best word, way to describe that, but, uh, you know, and so he's asking God, but he's not telling God, he's not cursing God, he's, you know, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great picture of his humbleness and, and his, you know, his thoughtfulness, really, that he can, you know, have the mindset like that and that's you know in that moment knowing what's about to happen you know avoiding any complaining or bitterment um bitterment. And it just points to his humanity too the mm -hmm. human side of him that was you know which is where we are you know yeah. that i know this is right i know it's what god wants me to do but god if there's a chance <laughs> we can do it a different way um and yeah and god's okay with that mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot of other great things in here. Uh, you know, Peter's uh, denial uh, predicted and done, Judas's betrayal, Jesus in the Sanhedrin. I mean, yeah, it's a great chapter. So hopefully you guys can jump into that and read it. Um, but yeah, if not, uh, we will see some of you on Sunday morning here at the church. Uh, others of you will see us uh, online as well. And then we'll be back uh, next week with uh, as much the same content as we can make. So uh, hopefully we'll see you guys around. Thanks for joining us this morning. <laughs> Bye. Bye.